It's one thing to take a video clip or a still image and move it around on the screen. It's another thing entirely to have some object follow motion within a video clip, follow, track, match that motion within a video clip. I'm going to give you a sense of how that works in this lesson. It's sort of tedious, so I won't show you every single step, but I will give you a feeling for how to do that. And I'm going to give you a finished project that you can use as a reference as you do your own motion tracking. Let's go over to Working Files, go to Projects, and open up 1303 Matching Motion. What we have here is one bike riding clip. And what I want to do is have text follow the motion. So the bike riding clip looks like this. You've seen it before if you've watched other lessons. These two folks coming down the bike path here and riding on by. What I want to do is I want to attach text to them as they go along and have the text match their motion, also grow in size as they go by. Well, I'm going to show you basically how to do that, but it is kind of tedious and time consuming. So I'm going to give you a finished project. And here is that finished project. So let's just take a look at how this turned out. Here they go. Coming around the corner there. Definitely is a nice day for a bike ride, you bet. <laughs> Not too fast. Ah, oh, come on. Let's race. So did you see how that worked? The text is on a little line there, and the line is following the motion of the bike rider there and on the left. I had yellow for the person on the left, and I have purple for the person on the right. And then we fade it in and out with cross dissolves there. The next one comes up here, yellow again. And the end of the line more or less follows the motion. It's not perfect, but we just have these little captions here. It's not like it has to be perfect. Let me go to the next person. And what you see here is that the line moves to make sure the text can come down with the line. So in this case, we have two different files. We have the line file and the text file. If you scroll up here, pull this down, you have two files there, the line and the text. And they work together and then go on off the screen. I have a cross dissolve at the end, but it's sort of not necessary because it's already off the screen. There you go. So let's have you do that. So make a new sequence by taking the bike riding clip and dragging it down to the new item icon. There we go. There's our new sequence with the bike riding clip on it. I'm going to press the backslash key just to kind of expand my real estate and pull this down here, this little spot between the video and audio tracks to give us a little more space for our real estate up here because we're going to put two clips at the end here, one throughout and another one on top here. Okay, so the first order of business is to add the first title to the sequence. I want it to pretty much line up to where that first bike right on the left there starts moving right about there. You can just see her there, barely see her. I want to attach this text to her. So the first order of business now is to move the anchor point. If I click on it and then go over to effect controls and click on motion, here's the anchor point. And it's best to have the anchor point at the point where you're going to attach something to the object of the person moving through the screen. It works better that way, particularly when you scale something. When you scale it up or down, it then scales from that person or from that object. So I need to move the anchor point. Well, moving it's not that easy. You just can't grab it and move it. You need to do it numerically. So I'm going down here to anchor point. I'm going to slide this left or right here. I'm going to slide it to the right. That moves it actually toward that point, but it looks like it's actually kind of sliding the words, but it's actually moving the anchor point now to that little point. And that's all I need to do here because the anchor point's at the right height here. So now we're all centered up. And now when I expand or contract this, if I shrink it down, it shrinks or contracts at the anchor point. It works more realistically that way. All right, so what I want to do now is move this to her. So I just move the whole frame over to her like that. Now I need to set keyframes for that spot. So I need to set keyframes for position and scale because we're going to increase the size of the text as we go along. Let's start the beginning of the text at, let's say, 60% of its original size there. There you go. And we'll have it grow as we move along. Now I've got keyframes set, so I'm going to pull the clip forward a bit here, and we want to follow this. So we're just going to see that she goes forward that far right there. So now I'm going to move it over, and that will pretty much follow her motion. Now we'll go back and see if that worked. See how it follows her right there? Do, 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 like that. Now we're going to go past the keyframe and see where we go next. Well, she continues to go to the left, and at some point she kind of hits an apex there. That's about far enough, I guess. So we'll pull it like there. Okay, so we've now followed her reasonably well. She went kind of a straight line. Let's watch that. There we go. Perfect. So I want to then increase the scale. So I'm going to go to the beginning here. That's 60%. I'm going to click on the keyframe navigation for position to get to the last keyframe that we put in there. Now we're in the last one. So I'm going to change scale now to, let's say, I want to know, 75%, something like that. There we go. So that changes as we go through that clip. It just gets larger as she comes closer to the camera. I'm going to, let's say, cut right there. So I'm going to trim it back right to there. There we go. 
Let's put the next clip in now, number two. I put cross dissolves between these clips over here. You can do the same thing, but for our purposes, we're just going to keep on working on the motion here. So now we want to connect this to the girl on the right there. So I'm going to click on that title and click on motion. Open up this thing so we can see the anchor point again. I need to get this guy lined up with the anchor point. It's a little bit farther away now, so it's important to really get it over there. So if I just drag this guy to the left, is that going to work? It's kind of confusing how this works, but if I drag it left, it sort of pulls it to the right there. There we go. Got lined up. Now I want to put that next to her on that side of her body, I think. Definitely. Turn on keyframes again for position and scale. We want to start here where we left off. So this one was 75% we ended, so we put 75 of this as well, so we can continue the general growth of this thing as we move along. Now we're going to go forward, follow her. So now she gets to a point where she gets about as far away from the anchor point as she's going to get there. So now I'm going to move it over. That adds a keyframe. Go a little farther, and then she kind of turns there. So we'll take it to just before she turns. There we go. Not much movement here. And now she's coming toward the camera, kind of going up there. So you need to bring her up like so. There we go. And now we're at the end of that clip. So we've got that motion followed. Let's see how that works. We'll go to the beginning here. Nice day for a bike ride. You bet. Definitely. Following pretty well. We'll trim this one back a little bit. There we go. Now I want to increase the scale. So we're going back to this. Go to this last keyframe right there, and we'll keyframe this one up to, let's say, 90. Let's say I'll just type in 90. There we go. So the text keeps on growing, so that's kind of the process to keep this guy growing, to kind of keep that little sense of reality, that they really have little words coming out of their bodies as they ride along here in this trail. Let's add another one now, number three, similar process. This time the other rider will talk, so let's get the anchor point set for that one. So I'll go over here to Motion. Click on motion so we can see it. And this time the anchor point is actually not on the same line. So we've got to do a couple of things with the anchor point here. I'm going to drag it a little bit to the left. Bring that over like that. Now I need to drag this up. So right. And then we do that. It comes actually down as we pull it down. So I'm dragging left to make it come down. I think we got it. And we just put it over by her on the left side of her like that. Her right, our left. And turn on keyframes for position and scale again. And we'll just skip some of the work here. Just show you the general process here. So I want to go on to the last clip, because the last clip has that little extra line in it to show you how that works. So let's add the next clip there, this title number four. We'll put it right about there. I think maybe we slide it down a bit like that so it can start not too late in the clip. There we go. And I'm going to put this other one above it, the line above it. If you look back at this one, you'll see that the line rotates. Watch the little purple line there. It rotates down so that we can accommodate the fact that the text would otherwise go off the screen there if we kept it pointing up. So we bring it down and have it go along like that. So we want to do the same over here and have the line move. Well, again, one of the advantages of having the anchor point at the place where you're going to attach it is that you can rotate on the anchor point. Let's go and click on this, click on motion, open it up, and see that the anchor point is way off the end of that line. We want this anchor point right there at the end where we're going to attach it to her. So we take the anchor point, dragging this thing right, Pulling it to the left. There we go. That's pretty close where we want, I think. You want to bring it down at all? I think that's pretty close. So we now have it lined up. I'm going to turn off the text tracks eyeball here to toggle that off for a moment, the visibility, so we can see this a little better. Let me pull this up to her. I really think we should rotate it now a little bit. So when I rotate it, you'll see that it rotates on the anchor point, which is really important. That's why you want the anchor point there at the position of contact. So I'll bring it down a little bit like that. So I'm going to keyframe position, scale, and rotation now. And now we're going to move her forward. And you see that we need to change the position, follow their motion like that. Go a little farther forward and follow the motion again. Eventually we're going to go off the page here. So I'm going to go down here maybe 10% so we can sort of see what's going on here. Go a little bit farther forward and we'll bring it all the way off the page here. We can keep on going if we want to. Let me back up a little bit now. I'll go back to fit. Back up like that. I want to be able to rotate that guy. So by the time it gets here, I want it pointing down. So I'm going to take this guy and rotate it counterclockwise to point it down like that. I also want to scale it up a bit now so that it gets bigger so we can follow the scale of the text as well. So I'm going to scale it up to something like that. So that'll change over time as we go through this. So we got a keyframe at the beginning and the end. There you go. Now I can put the text on. Turn that on by clicking this little toggle animation switch there. We need to have the 
text anchor point be at the end of this line there. So wherever we want to attach the text, we want to put the anchor point there. So I click on the text here, click on motion, turn it on so I can see the anchor point. I want the anchor point probably right there between the two lines. So I need to pull that down. Right about there, I think. And I'll move it up to the end of the line there, like that. That's going to be where we attach that thing. It'll also work well as we scale the line, and this will scale nicely too. All right, so we need to set the starting point for a scale on this last clip, and we would use the previous clip to set that starting point, but we actually didn't set scale there. So if we had, it probably would have gone from 90 to 105. So let's start this one at 105, and then we're going to grow it as we move this clip forward. So we keyframe scale and position. We don't do rotation for the text. And we go forward a bit, and we need to have the text follow that motion. So I click on motion again so we can see it. Bring it down like that. Keep on going forward. You can see how that works. Keep on going forward until eventually it goes off the screen. And all along here, we're going to increase the size so we can bring it up to something like that as it goes by. And eventually it's going to go way off the screen or like that. So that's the basic process. I'll remind you again of how it looks. It goes something like this at the end. Oh, come on, let's race. And we have it pull off the screen there as she goes off camera. So I think you get a sense of how you can track motion. It is a little tedious. And if you try to be exact about it, it can just drive you nuts. But if you're doing something like this where you can be loose with it, it's not so bad. You can just follow it generally and have it work pretty well. There are some effects inside Premiere Pro that work well with this process. Just think about lightning. If you have an object in the ground, and you want lightning to keep on hitting it, then you need to track that ending point. That's one thing you can do. You can also have the lighting effect where the light might follow somebody. You have just a brighter place for that person as that person moves around. You can just highlight that person as that person moves around the screen or whatever you're following. And then finally, remember lens flare? I just want to show you lens flare because lens flare is like the coolest one to use, I think. Type in lens here and put lens flare on the clip on the bottom there. Lens flare is just fun. So I'll click on this one, We've got lens flare. We click on the lens flare like that to turn on its center like this. I'm gonna go over to the first rider there, like so. Turn on the brightness a bit so you can see what we're doing. There we are. Turn on keyframes for the center and for brightness. And as that person moves along, for example, you might wanna take that guy and follow her. There you go. She comes onto the screen a little farther, let's say. We have keyframes going along here, so then we can follow that motion with a lens flare. I'm not saying that this really works for bike riding, but there you go. And as she goes along, you can change the brightness too. So the brightness starts low there, but as she approaches the camera, for example, you can have the brightness start increasing as she gets closer to the camera and then maybe decrease as she goes by, something like that. So that's the basic process to track motion. The biggest tip is that whatever you're going to attach to somebody or something, make sure the anchor point is at that attach point so you scale things and it scales so realistically. Otherwise, just have fun with your motion tracking, following, or matching, whatever you want to call it.